introduce the mayor of West Palm Beach, Mayor Jerry Moyo. Thank you, Tara, and welcome to West Palm Beach. We're so glad that you're here. Good morning, everyone. So, in December 2011, the Houston Astros were, according to the New York Times, the worst team in baseball. That's when they decided to hire a new general manager. Not only had he never led a team before, but he wasn't even a traditional baseball guy. Before his last job, he had been an engineer, a management consultant, and even the head of marketing for an online pet store. Jeff Luno was called a mad scientist by one blogger. However, over the past six years, he's never been afraid to take a risk. He took a team in America's oldest professional sport and reinvented it by using new ideas and by focusing on new priorities. Yet, today, six years later, the Houston Astros can claim one of the most coveted and prestigious titles in all of sports, world champions for the first time ever. How does that happen? How can any organization have such a tr dramatic transformation in just six years? They did it by thinking beyond the conventional. They did it by trying things that critics said were huge mistakes at the time, but later proved highly successful. And they did it by sticking to their vision and weathering the storm of short-term criticism. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk about leadership with Astros general manager, Jeff Luno, and team manager, A.J. Hinch, at the Major League Baseball winter meetings here in Florida. Congratulations on being the world champions. How does it feel? Feels great, and for us to do it after our first year of spring training on the east coast of Florida makes it especially uh, important. We in West Palm Beach are absolutely sure we had something to do with you winning the World Series. Well, I think you started us off on the right foot. The uh, with the with the quality of the place, the travel, the. Uh, that's where we started, so you have to be a part of it. Talk about leadership and uh, um, uh, getting to your goal and what it took to get there. Tell me a little bit about that. In my mind, leadership emerges through followership. If people are, believe in what you're trying to get them to do, especially if you're trying to get people to change behavior, and we did need people to change behavior to change the culture a little bit and think a little differently about how we were operating. So did you have your skeptics? Were there people who thought you were nuts? Yes. <laughs> yes. The people in West Palm Beach are very excited about your win. And what would you like to say to them? I mean, for me, it's, you know, we, we you know, everyone who's, who's touched, you know, this team or this organization is a part of it. And what I've noticed the most after winning is how many people want to be a part of it. And, and certainly that's the greater Houston area, people that have been in and out of the organization over the course of this this entire organization's history, uh, but it's also the people that, that house us for a short period of time in spring training that, that, has, that has become or will become Astros fans or part of our Astros family. I am honored that the Houston Astros are sharing their success with us here today by showcasing the World Series trophy at this morning's breakfast. There's the trophy. Please join me in congratulating the Houston Astros on their tremendous accomplishment and thanking them for sharing the trophy with their extended family here in West Palm Beach. Thank you. We also want to tip our cap to our friends, the Washington Nationals, who at the end of the 2017 season were at the top of the National League East. The Astros are world champions because they dared to challenge the traditional thinking. They embraced a 21st century ap approach to a 19th century sport. That is exactly what we're doing here in West Palm Beach, as we work to preserve and enhance the quality of life through an extraordinary focus on building a city for people. I come to work every day focused on how our West Palm Beach team can make our city a world-class city where people want to be, want to live, work, and play. 
It's the driving force behind my des desire to try new things and to push, push West Palm Beach, often excitedly, but sometimes kicking and screaming, in direction of a modern, successful, vibrant, urban future. A future that puts people at the forefront of its design and mobility. A future of greater economic opportunity for all. A future that cherishes our diverse history and a future that creates a sustainable and resilient West Palm Beach. Before going any further, I wish to acknowledge my partners. Like baseball, governing is also a true team effort. I'd like to introduce Commissioner President Corey Nearing, Commissioner Keith James, Commissioner Shannon Materio, Commissioner Paula Ryan, and Commissioner Sylvia Moffat. Commissioner Moffat, we appreciate you and your dedication to your constituents, and thank you for being such a great partner. We will miss you on the commission. Uh, of, yes. Of course, no success is possible without a strong home team. In this case, I mean my family. My husband, Charles, my daughter, Dr. Jessica Moyo, and her husband, Kem, and my three grandchildren, Jordan, Jada, and Julian Alexander, who are here today. Stand up, guys. Say hello. And I also want to thank Dennis Grady and the Chamber and the sponsors of today's breakfast. And a very special shout out to my friend Keith Spina, the Chamber's new chair. And I just want to take a minute to say a special thank you to my team who worked so hard to put this program together today. Thank you, team. You did a great job. Uh, yes. I am proud to say that our vision of a world-class city is becoming a reality. West Palm Beach has indeed made a name for itself, evolving into a city in the true sense of what a city is, a modern, created, creative, sophisticated urban engine that powers a region, a city where anyone hoping for a brighter future, can find opportunity and realize their dreams. West Palm Beach's economy is the strongest it's been since emerging from the economic downturn. In fact, West Palm Beach's unemployment rate is 3.6%, down from almost 10% when I first became mayor. Our city's tax base has grown up consistently, almost 43% in the last four years alone to nearly $12 billion. As a sign that even more businesses are moving to West Palm Beach, our business, re business tax receipts have gone up five years in a row. And right now, with over $2 billion of projects in our pipeline, we can safely say that our tax base should continue to grow over the next few years. Broadstone and Brightline are injecting a new energy into our area of the city that for years was called the Donut Hole, the underdeveloped area sandwiched between Clematis and City Place. And City Place is embarking on a bold new redesign they're calling City Place 2.0. In the last year, we saw the opening of the Alexander, the beginning of the Canopy Hotel, and the demolition of Old City Hall, making way for new destination waterfront hotel and residence. We are currently negotiating with developers to redesign our municipal golf course, and we are about to open bids on our tent site. Meanwhile, the new warehouse district, a complex of vintage buildings located right behind us off Old Okeechobee Boulevard, has become the new area to watch. Just two months ago, one magazine described it as a buzz with boutiques, beer, and booze, as well as fun food finds. I guess he liked alliteration, right? <laughs> if, you, if you haven't been there, I encourage you to check it out. It's the kind of quality of life revival that will fuel our city's continued growth. One of my primary campaign promises in 2011 was to create a business district to spur economic development. In 2014, we announced plans for the, to create the Flagler Financial District. And in 2016, we officially inaugurated it. Today, 
The Flagler Financial District has become one of the most powerful recruiting tools for business investment that the city has ever seen. To date, there are 232 firms called the Flagler Financial District their business home. In addition, we are committed to incubating new businesses. This year, we received a grant from the Knight Foundation for $180,000 to grow 12 businesses for 12 months. We are calling it the Thoroughfare. It will be located at 314 Clematis Street. And I'm pleased to announce that next week, we will begin to take applications from businesses interested in becoming one of the 12 and expect the thoroughfare to open in October. But to convince CEOs that West Palm Beach is their best business move, we need more Class A office space. Given the strong desire by many to locate their business to West Palm Beach, and what I suspect will be the impact of the new tax laws, there will be an increased demand for this highly sought after space. I am hopeful that there will be a future opportunities for the commission to consider the development of Class A office space. So today, I call on my fellow leaders, let's work together to bring Class A office space to our city because to truly reach our potential of a city where people can work where they live, we must bring more businesses to our urban core. While West Palm Beach undergoes an economic revival as a result of outside investment, I am pleased to share that the city is also investing in itself. No world-class city would be complete without superior infrastructure. So over the next few years, we are undertaking 157 capital improvement projects, totaling $230 million. If you are interested in what is happening in your neighborhood, you can track projects on the CIP portal on the city's website. Last year, I told you about our involvement in Bloomberg's What Works Cities. As a result of that involvement today, I'm unveiling our new performance dashboard, West Palm Working. You can go to our website, wpb.org, and track our progress on key performance indicators in our strategic plan, providing transparency by sharing data as to where we stand on meeting our goals. More good tech news. This is for your trolley riders. In two weeks, you'll be able to download an app to check on our trolley schedule. Use Trolley Tracker to know when the trolley will stop at your stop. Pretty cool, huh? It's the people who live and work here who make our city great. We have made a commitment to invest in our employees by working with the Great Place to Work organization. Last March, we administered the Great Place to Work survey and 1,000 of our 1,600 employees responded. While the majority of our employees feel that West Palm Beach is a great place to work, it was not enough for us to earn the designation. We learned a great deal about our workforce from the survey. We learned that people who work for the city are very proud of the work they do, the work they do to serve our community, and that they appreciate the opportunities given to them to learn and grow. But we also learned that they would like to have more be more involved in decision making. We are currently working with Great Place to Work consultants to help us get to that threshold number that will allow us to be among the first cities in the United States to make the list and raise the bar for other cities. We are also investing in the people who live in our city. WPB TV's Cheryl Kahn reports on one of the many ways the city is doing this. Twenty-five-year-old Dontavius McBride is excited about the future. He's back in college, has a new job and a new driver's license. Dontavius says he owes it all to the Square One program administered here at the Mandel Public Library. Square One, it just helped me to become a more responsible adult. Associate Librarian William Hollis, a former middle school math teacher, heads up the program where young people can go for help with any number of issues, like finishing high school and applying to colleges, job hunting, or even learning to drive on this driving simulator. And then you're going to start the vehicle. Many of those with dreams of a brighter future are starting right at the beginning, or square one. 
literally and figuratively. You're beginning at square one and establishing an action plan, it's, uh, establishing a goal, you know, where you would like to be, and then we establish a plan and a roadmap to help you get there. Today, 21-year-old Rosalind Rodriguez is back in school pursuing a nursing degree while managing a store and starting her own baking business. But a year ago, she faced an unexpected challenge. I lost my older sister and my great-grandfather. I was um, grieving. I couldn't really focus on my school. I needed a break. Rosalind credits Square One and William Hollis with helping her get back on track. It's a great opportunity to come here and have someone that knows what to do to help you. Square One is an example of how our city touches the lives of our citizens each and every day. Our library, the Mandel Public Library of West Palm Beach, has become an educational, social, and recreational hub for our city. In addition to maintaining and improving our public parks and recreation facilities, the Park Department of Parks and Recreation administers aftercare and sports programs to close to 1,100 children a year and more than 4,700 children attend our library's after-school programming. Combined, the Parks Department and the library fed close to 14,000 snacks and meals to children in our community last year. Our Housing and Community Development, or HCD team, continues to help residents realize the dream of home ownership helping 19 house, households with purchase assistance in the last year alone. HCD continues to work with the Lord's Place and other organizations to help the homeless get a home, with 39 people being diverted from homelessness last year. As a matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, we were able to place four people who were living in the City Hall Courtyard into homes of their own. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> and a special thanks to the Urban League for working with us to prepare young men from our city to, for work. Some of these young men will be working with Hedrick Brothers, Cooper Construction, and Dee Stevenson as they build our two new fire stations. Thank you, Dale Hedrick, Jackie Cooper, and Joe Sanchez, for giving these young men a chance to learn from the best. I mentioned... I mentioned that the city of West Palm Beach is only as great as its people. I wish to acknowledge my team, the 1,600 city employees who, when faced with Hurricane Irma, continued working for you to ensure our city was operational and safe. Thanks to the West Palm Beach Police and Fire Rescue Departments, our lifesavers, for rescuing families from homes with compromised roofs and ensuring good quality of care for residents in assisted living and nursing facilities. The very, the very dedicated Public Works Department worked around the clock for weeks to clear our streets in the aftermath of the storm. The city's rapid recovery was due in no small measure to their efforts. Please join me in saying thank you to them and to the rest of our city employees. Will city employees stand up so we can recognize you? Today, I could not be prouder of the leadership team that guides our city. When I look out during senior staff meetings, I see half my team is made up of women, and five of the city's largest departments are led by women. I've made each of these, I've made each of these hiring decisions individually, but together, a team has been assembled that sets the example for other cities to follow. Making, quality, making equality a priority extends not only to gender, but also to gender identification, minority hiring, embracing diversity, and helping those who need it the most. As a city, we have a special role in setting the right example for the treatment of all who live in our community. That is why I'm proud to say that West Palm Beach has earned a perfect score for the second year in a row on the Human Rights Campaign's Municipal Equality Index.
I'm also proud to say that 53% of our workforce is minority. And this year, we have raised the minimum wage for city employees to $15 an hour. And just, <laughs> and just last week, the city commission passed a living wage or ordinance, which means if you work for a company that is doing business with our city, your minimum wage will be $15 an hour by October. For seven years, I have tried to steer West Palm Beach in the direction of being a more vibrant, healthy, and equitable community. According to 880 Cities, if our city is as great for an eight-year-old as it is for an 80-year-old, then it will be great for all people. To realize this vision for an improved quality of life for everyone in our city, we must enhance our mobility and public spaces. As we design our urban, spa our urban spaces, we must put people first. Walking, bicycling, parks and public spaces build healthier, happier, and more equitable communities. 2018 will be a groundbreaking year for quality of life improvements in our city. I am pleased to announce that we have created the city's first office of public life, the first in the country. The Office of Public Life will ensure all of our decisions are evaluated on their effects on public health, sustainability, pedestrian friendliness, and the creation of safe and comfortable connections for all our neighborhoods. Public life will be a priority in government planning and investment. Today, I would like to introduce you to our new Public Life Director, Wendy Morse. You may you may know her as Captain Morse, recently retired from the West Palm Beach Police Department. Here she joins Matthew Lister of Gale Studios, our partner in creating a city for people, to talk about what this will mean for West Palm Beach. Hi, I'm Wendy Morse. I'm the director of the Office of Public Life. Hi, I'm Matthew Lister. I direct the New York office of Gale. Uh, we're a public space design and strategy firm. The director of the Office of Public Life is responsible for making sure that we are creating a city that works for people, that our public spaces are, are places that people want to be in, uh, enjoy being in, and feel safe and comfortable using. We had Gelt come in and do a study in the city, and they identified uh, five or six pilot projects um, that we're going to be doing throughout the city. The first one we're going to be doing is Dance Into the Sunset to try to create a contiguous, safe, comfortable connection from the Convention Center to Palm Beach Lakes along the Rosemary Avenue corridor. The project is called Dance Into the Sunset, right, because we're leveraging the investment that's happening for the revitalization and renovation of the Sunset Lounge. Uh, that will also be happening at the same time as investments are happening all along Rosemary, especially through City Place. We want to take into account um, each particular neighborhood's special, unique qualities and weave those into the public spaces of those neighborhoods. The goal of all of this is to continue to make West Palm Beach a great place for people, right? And to provide more options for as many West Palm Beachers to come in and stay longer and enjoy the, enjoy the great public spaces in the city. Example. We're working with Gal on Dance into the Sunset and Complete Clematis. We have developed an initiative with the Van Allen Institute and Ecosistema Urbana that looks at our city as a model waterfront city and asks how can we create a more vibrant space, that spaces that are intelligent, flexible, and responsive. This year, you will begin to see the results of our detailed mobility study come to life. Results that will provide you, residents and visitors, with better options for moving throughout our city, especially along the Okeechobee Corridor. Your safety on our sidewalks and streets, whether you are walking, biking, or driving a vehicle, is paramount. We continue to move forward with the citywide bike master plan to lay out a network of convenient and comfortable bike lanes, cycle tracks, off-road trails and bike boulevards that connect people 
of all ages and from all neighborhoods to the places where they live, learn, work, and play. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Our efforts to create the kind of quality of life that will make West Palm Beach an even more desirable place to live and work and play just don't end there. So today, I'm excited to announce WPB City for People, a vision of more than a dozen projects that will transform our city by redesigning key areas while putting people and quality of life at the forefront. Banyan Street Transformation, that will bridge the currently divided downtown and northwest neighborhoods in a safer, more pedestrian and bike-friendly manner. The Banyan Hub, a public-private partnership that will create a social hub with amenities like public meeting space, hip micro-apartments, and flexible parking where the old Banyan Street garage now sits. Clematis Streetscape. For the first phase, we are investing $2 million to spruce up Clematis Street. The Daytura Avernia Plaza project will reconfigure the roadway along the three to 400 blocks to create a public plaza and open space that will accommodate outdoor dining, recreation, and a tree canopy. Our downtown alleys. We will re-envision our downtown alleys into activated pedestrian malls. Our waterfront promenade. We will move forward with the redesign of our waterfront to make it more people-friendly. Northwood. We will redevelop the anchor site at the western end of Northwood Road. And Curry Park. We will reimagine Curry Park, making it a hub in our North End neighborhood. And here's good news. South Dixie Highway, I'm pleased to announce that FDOT has given us the go-ahead to redesign South Dixie Highway. These projects will usher in a new urban renaissance in our city, bringing about positive residual effects in areas of economic development, public health, sustainability, and more. As I enter the ninth inning of my time as mayor, for which I'm sad to say there will be no extra innings, I ask each of you, and especially our city commissioners, to join me on this stretch of our journey to building a better city for people. Become a part of the process. Come to our public meetings. Bring an open mind. Share your ideas, your feedback. West Palm Beach is where it is today because we have worked our plan never lost sight of our goals, and remained focused on the big picture. Success lies in our ability to embrace new ideas and new ways of thinking. Before I end, I hope you will allow me to leave you with one small piece of advice. It's the same advice I share for many others in the 